Today's guest is Maria Napolis, founder of the Latin American Art Pavilion. Maria has collected 16 years of extensive knowledge in the world of visual arts. Her passion for the art continued to fuel her work as she currently seeks out talent in the Latin American countries. We will get to know Maria and learn about the Latin American Art Pavilion. Welcome to Miami Global Net Podcast, where we discuss Miami's international relations. We will showcase Miami's international diplomatic and business landscape and get to know the innovative startups calling Miami home. Meet the people behind the organizations that contribute to Miami's commercial and cultural international growth. Maria, welcome on the show. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Did you have a good day today? Well, as usual, uh, with this uh, pandemic, telephone, computer, news, and eating all day long. <laughs> Same here. Same here. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm uh, Cuban-born, and I left uh, my island when I was about 18 years old. Uh, with a Catholic Church program that um, evaluates certain teenagers that I had in, in trouble already with the revolution uh, as a protesters of uh, occupational uh, revolutionaries in the private school, but in particular, uh, the religious school, uh, any religion, it wasn't only the Catholic Church, uh, trying to submit people not to uh, be involved with any kind of church or religion. And I was uh, part of the protesters as um, I was uh, the last president of the um, Association of Catholic Church in the province of Havana. So I got into trouble <laughs> since I was very young into this particular issue. Not specifically because I'm a, a right-wing individual, on the contrary, but um, the betrayed that the revolution did to the, the Catholic Church in particular was unadmissible. So I got all shook up into this issue and I called for the protesters as they took the, the nuns and the priests in ships to Spain, to Puerto Rico, and to other areas where they can be placed uh, in a school. So I got um, to Miami and I was here for maybe eight months waiting for this program to actually get me uh, in, into Puerto Rico a schooling system. Here in Miami, then um, I took the opportunity. It used to be instead of a Miami Day uh, College, it was um, um, a technical school called Lindsay Hopkins, which, by the way, it exists uh, at the time in Miami. And I took um, a certification as a um, second language English for teaching. But then I moved on to Puerto Rico, live with the nuns again for a while. And then I uh, applied for the University of Puerto Rico, the FIU. And I did a uh, couple of years, maybe three years of uh, psychology, clinical psychology. I didn't like it. And um, I was fortunate that I was choose by uh, an international company called Volkswagen of America. And I became eventually an executive of that company, da 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 and uh, life continues. So that's basically who I am, how I came into the state, what uh, kind of a schooling I have. And then I'll come back, I came back, I'm sorry, maybe 1972, back to Miami. And I continue working into the, um, automobile industry. That's how I, my life is all revolving or evolve around different industries as an executive. 
Then after that, maybe 75, 78, 80, I uh, remarry and then I work in the pest control industry. Wow. Yes. I became certified by the state. I was the first Latin woman certified on applying pesticides. And um, this company, I actually create a, a commercial division of that uh, kind of a local, a small company. And to year 2000, not to make a big story about that, I got divorced. Again, so I'm, I'm a, di a divorcee twice. And how I started within art, it was cause and effect. Because I, I used to be a, a singer uh, in a choir in, in church. Un, un coro. I don't know if I like, pronounce it. Like a chorus? Singing? Yeah. Yes. And I was always involved with art. I was a light collector. I said light because I didn't buy him important masters because that was a big investment. I, I didn't see it as an investment by then. I bought it because I like it. And um, up to here, this is the beginning of my life. <laughs> I was about maybe, I don't know, 32, something like that when I remarried the first time and then year 2000, got divorced again and it was cause and effect. I knew that in my life something was missing. I didn't want to work in the, um, such a cold men industries anymore uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a little tough and I didn't want to do the same thing again and again and all of a sudden, I start going out with a friend. She used to live in my same building in Miami. And she is a um, secondary market, very important dealer. And I like what I saw that she was doing. And then I start going to exhibition with her, da 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 all of a sudden, I became, I subscribed myself to an art magazine, Arte L'E International, but the magazine wasn't coming regularly. And I was wondering why. And then one day I decided, because I took like two years without doing nothing, but um, kind of understand my life and the purpose of my life and what I'm doing here, I already married twice. I have my kids. They are growing up already. What I'm going to do with my life? I have to have another meaning than this. So I find out that the magazine has their office in Cora Way and I think at 22nd. Mm -hmm. One day I went there to investigate what's happened with the magazine. Mismanagement, that's all, that was all. They didn't have a a really a strong department on how to distribute the magazine and they were looking for a salesperson on the phone for the magazine. And I said, this is me. I can do it. I mean, the, the director, the owner said, but you? I mean, you don't know nothing about art. You don't know. And it, this this is a very little job for you. You... You, you have uh, such an experience in your life, in business. And I said, it doesn't matter. I need to start doing something by the bat. I need to learn. He was impressed about that attitude, and he gave me the job. And that's how I started in this industry. Yeah. I think when I saw your the information on your, on your website, the name of the magazine popped out because a friend of mine used to work for that gentleman as well. Maybe, I don't know if you know, Juan Van Hartz. Was Juan? he working? Juan Van Hartz. Oh, Jesus. He was my baby. <laughs> Actually, he works under me. <laughs> and, yeah, because he was a young fellow. 
Ooh, smart. The mother is one of the best art dealers in town. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yes. yes. I know this family very well. And uh, actually, Juanchi, I call him Juanchi. It's good to uh, know. I'm going to start calling, if I may borrow that, I will call him that from now on. Oh, all right. He's, a good, he's, right. he's one of my best friends. Jesus, I can't believe it. Where is now? He's working. He's working in Miami. He's got a business in Key Biscayne. He's got a a, a big tutoring company now. Wow! Well, he was always yeah. good at that. He's man. a grown boy now. He's a grown man. Oh yeah, he's a man. Last time that I saw him, I was living in Key Biscayne, raising my grandson because I lived in Key Biscayne back ten years. Between I think it was between the eleven up to three or four years ago, helping my son to raise his kid. Once he came to Key Colony in his little Vespa, and we went around the Key, and we and we, we have a beer, and he, he brought me back in the Vespa, believe it or not. Beautiful. <laughs> that's him. That's, that's him. We're talking about the same guy. Yes, um, For how long with you with the magazine? I was um, from 2004 up to 2008, and uh, I became the administrator of that magazine. Yeah. So <clears throat> Hernan, which was uh, the, I should say, the arti art artistic coordinator of the magazine, relative some way, somehow, to Diego Costa Peuser, which was the editor of the magazine, brought in a friend uh, from Mexico, and we became uh, like family. And then we create um, an edi not editorial, a circulation department. You cannot have a magazine or any kind of um, um, books distribution or magazine distribution if you don't have a circulation uh, department. So we create a circulation department. I worked out with uh, the federal um, mail, uh, in other words, the uh, USP, U, um, USPS. Federal, oh. USPS, USPS. The USPS, yes. All right. A system where we were able to create by zip codes uh, a distribution in the other coast because in order to work in different coasts, you have to have different permits from the federal government. So we a, a magazine that was just distribution of maybe 500 issues, we um, brought it up to 1,000, to 2,000. And then um, that was a great experience because allow me, number one, to deal with art images, to deal with the galleries, with the artist, to understand the importance of images within the art business. Mm -hmm. By then, we didn't have no uh, really, let's say, any kind of um, business within the online or anything like that. But we do have the computers, so we exchange images back and forth with the editor in Argentina, plus the diagramador, which is the, the, the person that creates the context of the magazine in a particular way that, that, that becomes uh, an edit editorial uh, type of business. So yeah. to me, was not only a great experience, it was just a, a way of doing business, servicing the artist. Since, so allowed me to engage with galleries, museums, um, cultural entities, it was a new world for me. And um, I got in love with it. It was a totally different experience in life. And even though that I had always worked in service business, 
in other words, industry that's ultimate, any industry ended up in servicing because you create a product or you represent a product, but it have to be sold or have to be distributed. Whatever is the case, any industry always ended up in service. And I got fascinated. <laughs> and then I started educating myself. So let's, let's dive into Latin American Art Pavilion. All right. Um, in order um, for me to get into that, an event happened in my life, that particular individual, the editor and the owner of that magazine that is actually related to a family, it's a family business in Argentina. Uh, he was at the same time, the director of a fairly new art fair at the America, native to Miami, absolutely dedicated to the Latin American art, nothing else. And um, that was another fascinated uh, kind of a branch of the different business. We have the magazine, we have the images, the editing of the magazine, the business of selling the okay. magazine. And, and all of a sudden, I was facing an art fair. I wasn't working directly for the art fair, but since I was his assistant, because I became his assistant. Um, actually, investment, I was an investor as well um, for certain booking editing for emergency, emer emerging artist middle career, like uh, Duval Carrier, Jose Vedia, and I was the provider or you call it the sponsor economically to do those book. I put some money in and that's the way you do some business with the industry. You become a sponsor and, and for a change, you get pieces of art. That's how I start the collection. Uh -huh. Getting a, a little bit serious. So <clears throat> all of a sudden, that particular individual, Diego Costa Peuser, he decided to have his own fair, which is Paint Me Miami. He left Arte Americas, and my assistant in the circulation department became my partner, and I was um, appointed for the owners of the fair as executive director. Yeah. So... I didn't have no choice. I keep on learning and the growing was going into higher speed. And I became kind of a, like a star salesperson in Latin America selling a space for that fair. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Basel came to Miami and the whole backyard change completely. In other words, the instruments or tools to doing business in Miami change all of a sudden. We went from three fairs, which was at the Americas, um, Miami Art Fair. Miami Art Fair. That the Lester's the, were the owners by then. And it was another small fair, I cannot even think of the name, that were all native to Miami. Now, for those that don't know, the, which I didn't know for a very long time, Art Basel is an actual art fair in itself. Like if you're a Miamian and you grew up here and you grew up with the name Art Basel, well, obviously Art Basel has not been around for that long, but when you hear Art Basel, I thought about the entire thing. Later after I started working for the city and I started getting more insight in how everything operated, I realized that Art Basel is actually a separate, it's an individual art fair that happens in Miami beach and okay. everything else is, is more like a, everybody's like, like, I don't want to say borrowing on that time, but it, everybody starts doing their own art thing. So I, I don't know if you want to explain. Collaterals, collaterals of, 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 
or the mother fair. Um, they call it um, different. I might think of the name in a bit. I, I, it doesn't come to my mind at the moment. But they call it parallel, parallel fairs. Parallel fairs. So that is what I have been going to all this time, to the parallel fairs. I have never been to Art Basel. But Art Basel comes from where? From Basel, Switzerland. Basel, Switzerland. So that's where it started. It got its name. Our Basel uh, runs in Hong Kong. Oh. And uh, I think it's just Basel in Hong Kong and Miami. Okay. And Miami. Los Angeles and has been fighting with all, with teeth, <laughs> with, with, with teeth and uh, feet <laughs> like crazy um, dudes. <laughs> trying to get Basel out of Miami in Los Angeles, but they were not successful. Yeah. They tried for the last three or four years. Okay. Because when I had my magazine in, in Doral, a, we ended up through, through Juancito. What did you call him? Juanchi? Juanchi. <laughs> um, he put me in contact and we were able to put an insert in the magazine to distribute Uh, to distribute tickets. And I also received some to give out to some of the magazines and to help distribute and create awareness. So we were, we were, we were getting to Latin America art pavilion. You were, you were All telling. Right. So um, I run uh, as an executive director with Oton Castañeda, my uh, partner that now lives back in Mexico Uh, from 2008 to, to 2012. And eight, nine, yeah. yeah, it was about three years and the, the fair closed. So I was absolutely frustrated. I said, oh my Lord, I had think, this thing going on already. Um, I was making decent good money. And, but then the crash came in, the economical crash came in and I lost... Uh, I lost everything that I have in the market, like everybody else in town. It was major. So my son, one day, uh, my son uh, is an executive of the credit card uh, industry nationally. So he said, well, mother, you know what? I'm going to create a project for you, and I know you can do it. And then... I have my corporation since the beginning of, of, of the um, 2000. Yeah. And then he creates a DVA, and that when Latin American Art Pavilion was born. So it, it wasn't until then. It seems like it's an eternity, but it took quite a few years for me to really be a director of a project. This, it was a big deal. Do you provide any services? How come? I opened the, the, the project, um, um, and then immediately I was invited by the former owner of Red Dot Fair, which is native to New York, the original one. Uh, I was invited by the owner to become The, the the project, the person that represents Latin American art to his fair, because he wasn't successful inviting the Latin American galleries mm. to the fair for many reasons. Uh, you know, we all Latin American, we have different mentality, different culture, different approach, unless we... When we uh, come to the United States, we all get united. But when you detail and focus in each individual country, we are all different. And that's, that's very difficult for North Americans to understand that. So this particular person, George Billis, because I, I don't like to be like a secret thing. I mean, uh, all the names that I deal with, are very up front yeah. and uh, he was delightful in 2015 
actually we uh, the project was able to buy a quarter of the of the ten thousand square footage of the tent. I brought galleries from Latin America, from France. I brought a, um, a North American colleague that uh, deals with Latin American art as well. So it was it was going just great. I was happy again because I thought, well, here we go. We have some, something going on. That same year, he decided to sell the Red Dot to the Spectrum Group which I decide not to work with them for X amount of reason, because this might go public. It's not necessary to say um, or to comment matters that you don't agree with your competitors. Yeah. It's not ethical. So anyway, I decide I had it with fairs. I tried this way. I tried the other way around. And then this group from Brazil invite me, I was recommended to them as a director of the gallery, Art and Design Gallery. That's how the Art and Design Gallery came into the picture. We actually make a collaboration where the group of the artists from Latin American Art Pavilion were going to exhibit in collective ones three times a year. But <clears throat> that was the first time that I was a director of a, of a gallery. So added up good to my resume, but I got into that business at the wrong time. The whole market was giving a flash <laughs> that the, the market was going to change, that the business was going to change, that the sale the way of selling art, contemporary, emerging, which is not, because an artist can have a great trajectory, which means a, a lot of exhibitions, a lot of ex exposure, but not a, a good managing career, and nobody knows it. Mm. Nobody is aware of his art. And the the business within the visual art it has a lot to do with the auction houses with how prominent your art is out there that the good collector's name have your art in their collection so it's, it's a little bit of tricky business there and we notice 2014 was okay but since 2015, we start noticing that the fairs were not selling well the emerging contemporary artists, which is, are the ones that I just mentioned to you. That's why we call it like that. They are not upper career. So I, for whatever reason, someone from Broward put their eyes on the project. And then I start doing business as exhibition that the project was getting paid for. So I didn't have to charge the artist. That was good for the artist. In Broward Art Fair, in Miramar, the center, cultural center of Miramar. And I was part of the, um, the project was actually the vehicle that brought an exhibition from Cuba when the cultural center of Pompano Beach, the city of Pompano Beach actually was the government that opened up this cultural center. And lab uh, brought an exhibition from Cuba that for political reasons, it couldn't be done in Miami because of the, the historical exile. That's in general, all what lab does representing artists okay. with not open career, trying to create... So like emerging artists. Yes. So if I was an emerging artist in Latin America, I could reach out to you and, we, and you can help me get that upward mobility in this area, and then the South Florida area. Correct. Okay. Correct. How I do it? through a contract. In other words, the artists have to pay. It's like uh, paying 
for resident. The curriculum vitae, the artist statement, the bio, is reviewed and investigated by the curator of the project. Nowadays, everything is the internet. You don't need to write to any curator, any chief curator. Everything is registered and listed in the internet. And a curator, for those that don't know, curator... Okay, is curator is the, the individual that, number one, went to school for art. He become a historic individual mm -hmm. in related to visual arts. That's one career. The other career is that you study visual arts and you're going to work as a gallerist or director in a gallery. Curator is the individual that, that have one of those two careers, university careers, that is trained to choose artists to participate within exhibitions, either in cultural institutions or museum, or become an art director. Not necessarily to be an art director, you have to be a creator. But the creator is the person that evaluates in our project, in lab project, that evaluates the career of the art, either if you went to school or not, because there are some naive, self-taught artists that are fantastic, but still have to have a trajectory in order, in order to, to become a reputable how you, should I say this that without offending anybody? <laughs> you have to have a reputation as an artist that if you said that your art is in the private collection of Henry Ford, just to say a name, yeah. that can be uh, proved and testified. That if you say that your art is in the collection of the private museum like the Frost, for instance, that we can corroborate that that art that you said that you actually donate, most likely if it comes a museum, that is there. And if it's true. Oh, so that helps me as an artist say my art is in these places. The curator goes and be like, that is correct. And then he verifies to you or, or to exactly. whoever wants to do business. Exactly. That, yes, indeed. All this art is in these places. So it, it helps me with my reputation, with my... Building your career. Building my career. Because all these places have my stuff. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. So that's what the creator does in our project. And then furthermore... When the, uh, the artist doesn't have a professional curriculum vitae, because the curriculum vitae, it has to have certain points. It's like when you send a, a letter of things to do, that you have like dots, what have to be done in this particular um, commitment that we're going to accomplish in, in a particular project. That's what she does when she reviews the curriculum vitae. Exhibitions, solo, collective ones, the places with name and address and name of the exhibition, all of that has to be reviewed. So it's, a, it's a, an investigation that has to be done. When she does that kind of a curriculum vitae, she signs it, reviewed by... Her name is Anaïve Giero, professional curator, uh, university so-and-so in, in Cuba or in, in Colombia or in whatever art school you went. That gives way to the curriculum vitae. And then that's when you went to, the, to our web, that is a web catalog, you can see how the artist listed there as an sculptors, painters. It is uh, very and, nicely organized. That's what the creator does. So whoever decides to buy a piece of art from our, for one of our artists that we represent, it has the, 
the assurance, uh, the, the legal process that takes to create uh, a certificate of authenticity in each piece that is an original, that is an artist that went to school, and is an artist that have collections and a uh, group of collectors and entities of culture. Okay. That's what it makes the difference of projects that exhibit or projects that represent artists. So I know that we're running out of time, but I don't want to keep you for too long. Uh, you've been you've been awesome. You were running down the services that you provide. Number one, hmm. reviewing and putting uh, actually fixing up today the curriculum vitae, the bio, the artist statement, which is extremely important. The artist statement to communicate to the buyers why, when, why, and how you create your art pieces. And then the load up on the, on the web uh, catalog that at the moment is just a catalog, but we are actually dealing with a global platform called RC to become uh, online for sales globally. So that's part of the services that we provide to the artists. Independently, that as soon as the copy uh, goes away, that it will. The COVID, yes. Exactly. We are, yes, we are going back to uh, exhibitions, curated exhibitions in cultural centers in South Florida. Which is great. So you're like a one-stop shop for, for Latin American artists. Obviously, just on the connections alone, and of course, and all your time you spend here, you can you can definitely navigate all this landscape. I do have at the moment within the project artists from Peru, Argentina, Colombia. I had uh, sometimes some Uruguayans that are fantastic as well, and and the Caribbean. We have uh, Puerto Ricans, Cuban, and Haitians. Where can people find you? Your website, of course. All that I will put in the show notes. But if you want to... Exactly. We have uh, an email, which is Latin American Art Pavilion US at gmail.com. And my personal email, which is marianapoles08 at gmail.com. We'll be able to find that in the show notes so that you can reach out to Maria and get all the information to bring your art to uh to south florida maria thank you so much for joining us today it's been wonderful to talk to you and to learn about uh, the art industry and how you operate and how people can work with you fantastic thank you for your time your knowledge and your smile <laughs> wow <laughs> i appreciate it thank you very much you uh, you have a good day you too bye-bye